Hi everyone, this is Matthew Jenner for Card Runners, and I'm here with my seventh video in my pre-flop defending against three bets on the button quickie series. This is probably going to be the last video I make using this specific range where we open the button 45% and we try to defend 15.1%. So we're going to go ahead and get started with defending at least one more flop. Queen, queen, 10 with a flush draw. So let's go ahead and write that down. Queen of hearts, queen of clubs, 10 of hearts. Total combos is going to be 161. So we have a little bit less combos than we did with some other flops. So we'll have to defend a little bit less because there's so many removal effects. Times 0.7 equals 113. Should our opponent be able to properly bet any two cards? That's a good question here. And I'm going to talk about that in more detail in a moment. Value raising range is going to be zero here. I don't think we're, af I don't think we want to raise anything here. I don't think we're too afraid of giving free cards. If we do have a hand that's kind of strong, but maybe afraid of some gut shots or flush draws like Queen dra Jack, it's still better off to call, I think, and make the opponent double barrel at a high frequency since we get such good odds. And then even with a hand like Queen Jack, if we turn a Jack and he has Ace King, that's going to be amazing. So I don't think we're going to want to value raise anything here. Bluff raising range will be zero, of course, as well. Okay, so let's talk about that whole can our opponent profitably bet with any two cards thing. This is a board texture where it's not, there's going to be a lot of hands that I think are way ahead and way behind on the flop. So if our opponent's betting with a really bad bluff, it's not going to be that awful here. So like, for example, if our opponent was betting with any two cards on the last board texture we talked about, which was something like Jack-10-4 two-tone, that would be pretty terrible because there's so many good hands and so many bluffs our opponent can have that he doesn't, you know, for him to be bluffing with an awful hand when he can have so many draws, so many gut shots, so many flush draws, that's quite bad. His you know, the required strength he needs to bluff is going to be higher on that board texture. Here, there's still a reasonable amount of draw, but there's not quite as much because there are so many way ahead, way behind hands since both our opponent and our range includes so many queen X type hands. So this is a board texture where I'm not sure if he should be able to bet with any two cards. I would first want to see how my range would look when I defend 113 combos. And then based on, you know, that range, I would probably... I would start to estimate whether or not I thought this is a board where he should be able to properly bet any two cards. And if he can, I don't think it'd be one where it would be extremely profitable for him to bet any two cards. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so for three of a kind or better, we have 31 combos. So, oh, right here. So that's going to be trips plus is 31. So that means, yeah, not very often I write trips plus, but 31 combos is quite a lot. So one thing that's kind of important to realize here is if we end up defending around a third of our range when our opponent goes bet, 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 so 161 times 0.33, we end up faulting around, you know, 53 combos by the river, give or take. So 31 hand combos makes up a lot of that range. So if our opponent does go bet, 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 we will have trips quite often when we call down, which of course kind of makes sense when you think we're calling with preflop ace queen off, king queen off, and queen jack off. So we have quite a few trips here. Now let's look at middle pair. So middle pair is 55 combos, or um, 55 combos is middle pair or better. So that of course means, yeah, middle pair is 24 combos, perfect. So let's write that down. Middle pair is 24. Okay, and so we already have quite a few made hands to call down with if our opponent goes bet, 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 but we don't know that he's always gonna take the line bet, bet, bet. So we might also wanna call with some hands that can still win by checking back on the turn. So we'll keep that in mind, but let's look at sort of the easier calls first. So flush draws, that's going to be 13 combos. Let's look at opening straight draws. Probably don't want that anymore. That's going to be 18 combos because we have to discount the flush draws. So open and straight draw is going to be 18. Let's look at some gut shots, perhaps. Gut shots is going to be another 21 combos. Gutter is going to be 21. And so that gets us to how many? 31 plus 24, that's 55, plus 13, that's 68, plus 18, that's 86, plus 21, that's 107. So that gets us to 107 combos. And now we want to just pause for a moment and think, you know, do we have a balanced range here where we have a decent amount of made hands and a decent amount of 
of draws. And so far, this looks pretty decent. We're in position. We have 55 made hands, less draws than that at around 52, I believe. So yeah, this looks really balanced so far. So for the last hand combos, you probably can get away with flatting with a few made hands like pocket nines or trying to see if you can find some other draws that you kind of like. Like maybe you like, you know, some sort of ace nine of clubs or something like that. Um, I don't really have that strong of opinion, to be honest. Either one of those sounds fine. I would just try to call with the six more hand combos so we actually are defending 60%. But even then, this isn't really a problem or anything. There's no reason why you need to defend 60%. It just means if you do, then your opponent's not profitably betting with any two cards on the flop. So looking at this board texture, it does look like we're going to be able to defend enough to prevent our opponent from betting profitably with any two cards. And that doesn't surprise me. That would have been my original guess. But just keep in mind that even if you just change a little bit about a board like this, like if you make the 10 and 8 and these queens a king, now it's probably going to be much more difficult when we don't have hands like ace-king off and we don't have as many gut shots. So just keep that in mind when you are doing boards like this. All right, so we need to still call with six more hand combos, so I'm just going to throw in the pocket nines. I'm not really seeing anything else that I'm particularly in love with, so sure, let's just do that and move on. All right, so flop bluff raising range zero. All right, so turn total combos. Let's randomly generate the turn card and find out. So the turn was a three of spades, and I stuttered while explaining what I would do on the three of spades turn, so I just restarted the recording. I usually stop recording every two minutes, so it wasn't a big deal. And I'm going to go ahead and explain what I would do now. So desire to combos defended is going to be 113 times six zero point six eight five. We didn't have any removal effects from the turn, so that's not a big deal. It's just going to still be 113 hand combos. So, calculator, 0.685 times 113, we need to defend 77 hand combos. So, can our opponent properly bet any two cards on the turn? Most likely not, but we'll go ahead and look and make sure everything looks good. So, what hands are we going to defend on the turn? The top pair, or trips plus, is going to be 31. I personally would not raise any hands on this turn card. But if you wanted to raise and you could make a good argument for it, I probably wouldn't have a huge problem with it. So, you know, obviously when you raise king, queen, and some bluffs, when you're going all in on the turn, your opponent still has to call a very lot because you're getting such, such amazing odds when you jam like an open-ended straight draw or a flush draw on the turn that your opponent really doesn't like folding a lot since when you're going all in, you're only betting a half pot size bet more. So you could probably make an argument for jamming on this turn, but personally, I would rather call, especially since if we have, you know, king, queen, or something like that, we block one of our opponent's queens, so he's probably a little bit more likely to be bluffing, and I just think we're more likely to get value by calling, and I'm not too afraid of giving a free card if he happens to outdraw me, so be it. So you could raise the turn personally, I'm not going to, trips 31. Now, one thing I talked about in the last video, and I'm making this video before that video has been released, so I don't know if people have asked questions about it or commented about it, but I talked about how when you're designing your turn calling range, you want to make sure you're going to be able to call enough river bets. So we're going to do that right here. 77 times um, 0.667 gives us 51 hand combos. So if we defense, if we call something like middle pair 20, we're going to be able to call with these hands on the river, and we're going to be totally okay, even if the river blinks. One other thing we need to look at, which I did not talk about in this last video, is if we add in our last 26 combos here, like if we say something like draw 26, we need to make sure that we're not completely screwed on the river if our opponent checks to us and we're able to bluff the draws that we need to bluff. So... Not all draws are necessarily going to have to bluff. If we have ace jack of hearts on the river and our opponent checks to us on a two of diamonds river, we likely won't need to bluff that because, you know, we're probably not going to lose to ace king, a pair of threes, or a pair of twos. So that might be okay to check in theory. Our draws will sometimes get pairs, even if they're very weak pairs, that we can check back. So it was something that I didn't talk about in the last video, but just keep that in mind as well. When you're designing your turn range, you need to be able to make sure you can call enough river bets and you need to make sure that you have a good, solid plan that your range is still balanced when your opponent checks to you on the river. So there's two th ways you have to balance it. You have to balance it from two perspectives. And sometimes that's difficult, sometimes that's not. But just keep that in mind. So here, um, you know, that might be a little bit heavy on the draw side to call with 26 combos. So maybe you want something like middle pair 
Maybe you want to use all your middle pair combos and something like 22 of the draws, something like that. It's hard to tell exactly, and this isn't something I would, you know, lose sleep over trying to get perfect. But, you know, just make sure that this looks reasonable where you're not too weighted towards made hands and you're not too weighted towards draws. And how many draws are okay to have is also going to depend on the strength of the draws. So when the other... Um, in the last flop, our draws were, like, awesome. They had, like, two over cards and opened it in straight draws, all these awesome flush draws. They're less awesome here. So, once again, there's just a lot of variables you have to take into account and do the best you can. All right, so let's randomly generate the river card. We're probably not even going to need to write anything down here. Okay, so six of diamonds on the river. So now when our opponent jams the river, we're just calling with all those made hands. So we would just call with this range right here. We could... Um, fold a few middle pairs, but for the most part, when we're calling with trips, we're going to beat some of the hands in our opponent's value range. When we're calling with boats, obviously we're nutted. And even with, and then middle pairs will be our bluff catchers, where if our opponent's balanced on the river with the right ratio of value bets and bluffs, he should make us indifferent to calling with our middle pair bluff catchers, whereas calling on the river, so with those middle pairs will be break even on the call. And then when we're calling with trips, you know, it's going to be a quite profitable call because we're probably even beating some hands in our opponent's value betting range, as well as the fact removal effects actually are pretty relevant here since we're blocking, you know, half the trip combos our opponent can have when we have trips ourselves. So those are sort of little nitty details, but just something to keep in mind. So in practice here, I'm probably not going to, against most opponents, hero call them on the river with, you know, a bluff catcher with 10x, even though that makes sense in theory. Once again, as I've already said, I think this range is a little bit too wide of a flatting range preflop from what is theoretically correct in the button, because I don't think, in theory, you probably can open the button as wide as you can in practice. So that makes me think we should be folding most of our middle pairs on the river, and just in practice, at most stakes, or every stake I've ever played, which is pretty much up to 2-4, you're not going to see... I don't think a lot of opponents triple barrel bluff you on this board texture because they know we can have ace queen, we can have king queen, we can have queen jack. We have a lot of really strong hands here. So in general, I would say people don't bluff enough. At least most opponents probably don't bluff enough when you can't be strong, much less when you can be strong, people don't bluff nearly enough. So obviously there's exceptions to this. There's some very good players that when you can't be strong will bluff too much in theory, so they'll exploit you very hard by bluffing when they know you can't be strong, but I would say both in theory and in practice, on board textures where we can be very strong, our opponents aren't going to be bluffing nearly enough to make us want to call with 10x. So I guess I shouldn't say in theory. In practice, on a board texture like Queen Queen 10, our opponents probably aren't going to be bluffing nearly enough to make us want to call with 10x because they're going to know we can have so many strong hands in our range, and they're just not going to bluff aggressively enough. So that wraps up this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and thank you for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave those in the threads, and I will try to answer them. So thanks for watching, guys. Good luck at the tables, and I'll see you soon. Bye.